A mosque is not like a church, neither it is like a synagogue, for the simple reason that the mosque in Islam, religion and life are not separate, they are indivisible. In other words, the Western view or the non-Islamic view of life is that it is part, religion is part of life. In Islam, life is part of religion. In other words, every aspect of a man or a woman's life must be governed by that religion. So there is no concept of personal freedom, there is no concept of a personal relationship between uh, the person and who he worships. It has to be governed in terms of eating, sleeping, uh, talking, everyday practices, everyday, it is all being by people live by prescription. A mosque is a seat of the government. A mosque is a school, a mosque is a court, a mosque is a training center, a mosque is a gathering, a social center. It is not worship per se as worship only. Every single mosque in the world is modeled on the mosque of Muhammad in Medina. His mosque, the first mosque, was a place where he gave judgments where he decided who will be executed, the wars were designed there, they were, it was a storage place for arms, it was a training place, and that is where the troops were set from, set forth to conquer the rest of the world. Therefore, if the mosques, the present day mosques are modeled on that model, there is a need and a very serious concern. Of course, it is no secret, this is in public domain, Arms have been found in mosques, in different countries, in different capital cities. When uh, there was the, uh, an imam in Finchley, uh, in a place uh, that was in the United Kingdom, Finchley Park Mosque, Abu Hamza, he trained people, he sent out terrorists from there, they found arms there, so, and he was within his, the Islamic agenda it was appropriate for him he didn't find it wrong because it is in the Islamic manuals your first question it is ludicrous for anybody to accept that this is a gesture of peace the Muslim world until today has not accepted that it was Muslim preparation, the terrorists were Muslims who attacked the World Trade Center. They say this is an American conspiracy, this is a Jewish conspiracy, this is another conspiracy, this is a CIA conspiracy, but the Muslims. I think it is appropriate for the Muslim community and particularly in the United States to accept that those terrorists were Muslims. They must be condemned and it is not good enough to say that oh, Islam is against terrorism and Islam is against killing innocent people. They must say that 19 are not martyrs, they are suicidals and they are terrorists and they are not to be emulated and they would burn in hellfire forever. They are regarded as martyrs. And therefore, that is to start with, that is not a gesture of peace. Are these mosques beachheads in the sense that the one at Al-Aqsa is? A mosque is a is, is signia and a symbolism of the establishment of an Islamic authority and the Islamization of that territory and the rightful restoration because Allah has declared in the Quran that the whole world belongs to them. And Muhammad came and said, وَجُعِلَ لِلْأَرْضَ مَسْجِدًا وَطَهُورًا And the whole earth has been declared unto me a mosque. And therefore it is re-restoring. It is not only a conquest, but it is a re-restoration of their rights and the Islamification of the rest of the world. The Islamic calendar was established by Omar bin al-Khattab, the second Khalifa. And he used to receive, he received letters from 
the various judges and governors in the in the Islamic territory by then saying to him your letters are undated and he called a committee to look into it and what they decided was that to start with the birth of Muhammad or with his uh, various other dates were considered and he said it is inappropriate because we must start from the day of victory from the time that Muhammad in his life was transformed from a haunted man to a victorious ruler and that date of al hijrah the migration from Mecca to Medina became a significant date obviously the Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar it is not a solar calendar but that is the significance and the significance of it is the declaration of victory of Islam over the rest of the world Migration is not only physical in Islam, but it is a concept and it is a migration of people can be in the same spot, but migrating from the jahiliya, from the age of ignorance, into the full Islamization, therefore in implementation of the Sharia. So a woman who may not be, who be Western dressed, and her migration would be that she now con adorns herself with the total niqab or hijab and so on. This means a migration in that form. Other migrations, financial, uh, personal, physical, this is all to achieve one purpose, the Islamization of the rest of the communities, the Islamization of their territories, the Islamization of their neighbors. And by doing so, it is not only forcing, but conditioning others. The most important thing for non-Muslim to understand about Islam is that Islam is not simply a religion. Islam is a socio-political system. It is a socio-political, socio-religious, socio-economical, socio-educational, socio-judiciary, legislative, militaristic system cloaked and garbed in religious terminology. And therefore Islam is not like every any other religion that goes out comparing here and contrasting to the Christian faith for instance and doing missionary work and saying come and be converted this is a peaceful thing and so on and so forth no Islam has always come out and marched and it is conversion by force so it is a political system when Islam came out from Arabia it did not go out these, these were not missionaries laboring peacefully talking to their neighbors and saying here is what Muhammad our prophet had come with and so forth and so on. No, they were hordes of assassins who marched into the rest of the surrounding world and subjugated them by force. Islam is a system and wherever there is a Muslim community there will be a Sharia and wherever there is a Sharia there is an Islamification of the territory and ultimately of that nation.